In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of Google Classroom, including how to get to Google Classrooms, how to add a class, how to get rid of a class that's already been preloaded for you, and how to get started with assignments. To begin, go to classroom.google.com. When you first arrive, it may take you to a page that looks like this, and that's okay. All you need to do is click on the blue button that says Go to Classroom. You have to sign in the first time using your school email address. You do not want to use a personal Gmail account. It's going to ask you, is this a personal Google account or a G Suite account? You want to click on the top one that says G Suite account. When you get to this page, you'll need to sign in with your school email address and your normal computer password. This is your normal password that you use every day to log into your computer. It's going to ask that it wants to verify that it's you. Just hit continue. And it's going to take you to the first page that you see, the landing page right here. Now what you're looking at is all of my classes. Um, in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get rid of some of these classes. So the Board of Ed may have already preloaded these classes for you. Some of them are from even last year or some of them are for this year. If you want to get rid of a class, you can hover here and see that opens the gradebook, that opens um, lessons. But you can click on the three little dots in the type right hand corner and click archive. That will get rid of it for you. I do not want to get rid of any of these, so I'm not going to click it. Next, I'll show you how to create a class. This is where you would join a class if you were a student or if you were doing professional development and it was done on Google Classrooms. You can also create a class. So if you wish to create a new class, you're going to click on the Create Class button. This gives you the option to put your name, your section, your subject, and your room. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to call it a training class. A section's not applicable. A subject, we'll just say testing. And the room, we're going to say at home. You should now see your class appear. I'm going to click on it, and we're inside the training class. So the first thing that comes up is your stream. What you're looking at um, where my mouse is is the class code. Anybody that's going to join the class would use that code to join it. So if you're inviting students to join, they would need to enter that code to be a part of the class. Right now, what you're looking at is the stream. The stream is where you can communicate, you can share a message um, with your class, you can add pictures. This is if there's a fog delay or remember that you have a test tomorrow, anything like that, you'll type here. I'm just typing, hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. And you can choose what class it goes to. If you wanted to add any files like a YouTube link or Google Drive, you would click add right there and just click post. And you can see that I've entered it right away. And it says, hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. Now, you can have students be able to co comment back or you can disable that so that you can send them messages but they can't comment back to you. That's a personal choice for you and that's in your settings of your class. Next, we're going to the Classwork tab. Now, this is where you'll create all of your assignments that you're going to use. And to get started, you're going to go to the blue button and click Create with a plus sign. Now, you have many options here. Um, let's start with the assignment. Let's just pick an assignment. So you first give it a title. Let's do ours called Chapter 1 Reading. And instructions, you can add anything that you want, directions for the students. Um, and then I'm just going to say, please make sure you read chapter one and answer the questions. And so then you could then add your question sheet there. So if you do, if you use Microsoft Word, you can add the file right there. Or if you use Google Drive, you can add it from there. If you wanted to add a link to a website or a YouTube video, you could click it right there as well. And then you would go ahead and add it. On the right-hand side, you can choose. So you would be able to add it to all of your classes at the same time. So if you taught the same class and you had five of those classes, you could add it to them all at the same time, which is very nice to be able to do. Or you can just pick one class. You also can decide if you want to do um, one student or all your students. So I don't have any students loaded right now, so it's not showing the students. But you would be able to pick just one particular student if you just wanted to give an assignment to one student. You can also choose your point value. It automatically populates 100 points. You can choose if it's ungraded or if you just want it to be low points. And you can choose your date. It automatically picks the next day as the due date, so you can back it up if you want it to be that date. You can also choose the time. So if you were giving them an hour to complete the assignment, you can say it's due in an hour or due by 
245 today. Um, and then when it when the students turn in their work, it will show you who's on who's late and who's turned it in on time. Topics are the headers that it'll go under. I'm just gonna say classwork. If you had a grading rubric, you could add your rubric there and you could go ahead and click assign. You'll notice that we now have something inside our classwork. Um, all topics and classwork. Classwork is a, is a section of its own now. Think of it like a tab inside a notebook. And you can now see who has turned in your assignment and who it's assigned to. It's a zero assigned because we have no students listed inside this training class, but I'll show you what it looks like in my real class in a minute. And then um, if you click on it, you can edit it, you can delete the assignment, or you can copy a link and be able to to send it to someone else to, to look at or to add. The next tab up here is people. Um, if there's more than one teacher in the classroom, you can add a teacher by clicking that and adding their email address. And the tab under that is students. It's going to show you students. And it's, it's reminding you right there that you have to give them a class code in order to invite them to take the class. So they would need to put in that class code when they first get to Google Classrooms and they could join the class. And next is grades. Um, nothing showing up right here because I don't have any students in there. So let's go back to um, classwork and let's add a question. A question is a great thing. I use this as a warm up all the time. And so you can use a question for a class discussion or you can use a question to do um, a vote. What would you like to do next project wise? Um, or you can use it as like an exit ticket. I'm just going to say warm up. What color is the sky? You can do short answer or multiple choice. If you needed to put instructions there, you can. Sometimes I just leave it as a warm-up question. It's self-explanatory. Again, you can assign it to more than one class or just one student. You can change the point value in it, and you can pick the date that you want it to be. Uh, I'm adding a topic. Sorry, I'm going to add a topic, warm-up, so that it now has its own tab or section. And down here, you can say students can reply to each other. So if it's a class discussion, you want that checked so that they can write back and forth to each other. Um, if you want them to be able to edit their answer, you want to click students can edit answer. And if you want them to just answer you and not answer the whole class, make sure everything is unchecked. And then when you're ready, you will go ahead and click ask. Now you can see that we have two sections. We have a warm-up section, we have a classwork section. Um, and then underneath on the left hand side you can see that it has all topics, warm-up, or classwork. And you can click on warm-up or classwork to take it to just that section or all topics to see everything at once. If you click on Google Calendar it's going to show you assignments for that class. Now for me as a teacher view if you have more than one class it's going to show you the due dates for everything for all classes all at one time. On the left hand side you can make it show just one class um, or show all of your classes. You can change that preference. And for students if they have more than one class, let's say their English and math class use Google Classrooms, they can adjust it as well to see all their due dates for all their classes at once um, um, by month or by week and they can adjust that as well on the left hand side. Okay, class drive folder if you click on this this is where you could add your syllabus or any materials that you want the class to have for a project. Um, it just goes into the class drive and everybody can access that material. All right, so now I'm going to show you my other classes. So let's look at one of my real classes that I teach. So here's my first period class. Um, you can see that I have posted a message to everybody thinking of everyone, hope you're well, miss you, and a video that I just put. Down here you can see on the stream, we're in the stream section, every assignment that I have put is going to show up there. If I click on classwork, you can see kind of my tabs. I have a warm up tab, a classwork tab, extra credit. Um, so if I'm clicking on this warm up here, I can see that 18 students have turned it in and two have not. Um, if I click on the two, it'll tell me what two students did not turn it in. If I click on the 18, um, it'll show me which of my kids have turned it in. I could go ahead and enter a grade for them right there. Um, I can leave them comments. Let's say that I wanted to um, go ahead and grade a student's assignment and leave them a comment. Maybe they didn't get the answer correct or maybe they got partial credit. Um, I could go ahead and click on it and at the bottom down here I can add a private comment to just that student and then I can return the assignment back to them. All right, so I have lots of tabs under mine. I have an extra credit section. Um, if they're missing work, I have a missing work section. Here's a assignment that I'm doing with them now, um, and I can see that one student hasn't turned it in. I have missing work, so if anybody's missing any assignments, they give it to me there. Graded assignments I put in there for anybody that's already, um, this is all the assignments I've already graded that they've done, so they can see what I have graded and what I have not graded. 
And down here is class materials. So um, for instance, the first one that I have listed is a copyright free link and I can click on that and they can go to it. It's not an assignment, it's just a class material that's helpful for them to have. And then I also have a section for semester one projects so they can go back to projects they did the first half of the year if they want to revise it or look at it again. All right, underneath people, it's gonna show me all of my students and it's also gonna show me their parent email address, which is nice. So if a student has more than one class that uses Google Classroom, the parents are gonna get updates from all of the classes. And parents can decide if they want a weekly or a daily update. I always suggest that they do a weekly update because it can be overwhelming the number of emails that you'll get from Google Classrooms. And you can invite a guardian by clicking on that and typing in their email address. Grades will show you everybody's grades, what is missing, what's not been assigned, due dates, um, and then a course stream again is going to show you um, all of the, like at a glance. And you can see that if you go to all topics, it shows you everything. And if you click on the individual tabs, it will show you everything just in that tab. Clicking on here allows you to see all your classes. You can go to your different classes. Let's go back to the training class that I have right here. That's the code for the training class. And in this code, you can see that it has, I don't know if that's an O or a zero, and sometimes that's very confusing. So if you want to change your class code, you can go up to the settings right there. You can edit any of the information. If you go to class code, you can say reset and it will change the code so that it's a little bit easier. You can click on that, um, and if you want to join the training course cl uh, class, it's just a practice, it's U5I6DBZ. And I will put a couple things on there and you can practice what it's like as a student view to be able to write back or send a message um, and see what it looks like on your end. So I'll, I'll post a couple things on there. So just join our class that way.